All right, bet. Let's get into it. I've been dying to get this one recorded this week. Um, I was a little bit under the weather and uh, couldn't really get on the mic. It was sounding crazy and, you know, really just didn't have, have the energy to get it done. But here we are. We are uh, we back and we live. Pizza King podcast. I'm the host, Tyrell Reed, Pizza King, here to give you real life practical advice on running your shop, building your team, growing your business. Um, so thanks again for joining me. Appreciate everybody that is tuning in, anybody that's listening, everybody that, re that reaches out to me. Um, I can't be more grateful. Like, seriously, I'm, I get to set up my laptop and get on this mic and talk about, talk about pizza and what, and what we do and what I do every day. So, you know, super grateful. But yeah, like I said, under the weather, it sucked to spend Father's Day uh, kind of holed up in the room and not feeling well. Who who comes up with those phrases? Yeah. As I was thinking, as I was saying under the weather, I was thinking to myself, that makes no sense. Who made that up? Who was the first person to say I'm, I'm under the weather and they were referring to not feeling well? The hell does that even mean under the weather? I can't even even begin to think about how many of those crazy phrases or sayings there are in our, in our language and in our cultures. Um, but that was just kind of funny to me under the weather. The hell is that even me? But here we are, I guess I'm back above the weather on top of the weather. I'm good. I feel better. Uh, get my energy back at the gym this morning. So we were on a mission. I got this little wager going on with, with Paul, to uh to get my run time down we got a bet that i can run an eight minute mile by september so your boy is working hard it's gonna take a lot of work oh uh, so 5k every friday until we get there all of it in preparation for the treasure treasure chest 5k with the bucks um in september which is which is gonna be dope um but y'all didn't come here to hear about that you came here to Talk to me about crazy phrases that make no sense. The one that I want to talk about is actually part of what I want to do and what I want to talk about today. You know, I got my notepad. I want to talk about this phrase that has played the, the business, right? The customer is always right. The customer is always right. The customer is always right. And while on some level, I disagree with that statement. The customer isn't, I don't, I don't think that the customer is always right, but the customer does always pay. And what are we here for? We hear that you, you want to be right or you want to get paid? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what, what are you trying to win here? Uh, I want to talk about customer service. You know, that's something that has been kind of a struggle over these last, you know, this last generation of, of, you know, restaurant operations and pizza, pizzeria operators, the service piece is kind of going out the window. And for whatever reason, there's, you know, technology taking over and, you know, people cost more and you're getting less skilled people for what you can afford to pay, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's probably a long list of reasons or causes to, you know, to that. But, you know, what can we do as leaders to improve our, to, to improve our experience, to improve our service, to improve the, you know, the overall care from our team, right? I mean, it's, it, when people care, then the service is better. When people don't care, then you get shitty service. So how, how do you work on that? Um, how do you solve those things? How do you? How do you handle customers that, that have complaints? How do you, you know, how do you keep the team? How do you get the team to, to care enough about it? Right. And that's, that's something that is important to me. Something I've, you know, there's things that I've learned. There's, you know, things that we still continue to work on because it's, it's a never ending process. Like we, like we always say, it's, it's, it's never built. It's always building. 
same thing with service. It's something that we gotta, we have to constantly work on. And what I wanted to, what I wanted to talk about or what I'm going to talk about is, is, you know, how we solve those complaints and how we, how we, or, you know, how we look at our relationship with the, with the guest and how that plays into solving, you know, their, whatever their issues are, because let's be honest, we're as, as hard as we work and as much as we try, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. Sometimes those mistakes are met with grace and sometimes they're not. Sometimes people are pissed off about their pizzas and we have to solve that. Um, this came up because I, I was talking to an operator, excuse me. I was talking to an operator uh, a couple of days ago about some issues that they had been having with customers who were ordering from wrong location. And the customer, the guest reached out to me and said, Hey, look, I feel like I'm like my, they took my money, like order from the wrong store, made a mistake. Um, tried to contact the other store and tell them, Hey, I'm sorry. I got it from the wrong place. Can you refund my money? And you know, the operator or whoever they talked to at that point told them, look, that, that's not our problem. You ordered it. You need to come get your food. We're not giving you the money back. It was like, Ooh, and, and when I talked to the operator, you know, they're, they're like, look, man, this, it's not our fault that they order from the wrong store. How, how do we prevent them from doing that? We can't, we can't just take the loss on those things. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, you're not so, you're not so willing to help a customer that isn't yours, but on the other side, how would you want to be treated if you were the guest in that situation? Like we're, we're all operators, but we're also all consumers too. So I always tell them like, just think about yourself on the other side. Like, how do you, how do you want the situation to be handled? If that were you, if that were someone from your family, if that was, if that was your child, that was your wife, that was your husband going through that. How do, how would you want that to be handled? And you know, I'm always one to say, let's, let's just meet that with grace and, and, and give them the benefit of the doubt because to me, every, every time you have to solve you have to solve something for a customer. I encourage operators to think about the long-term value of that relationship, not the transaction. Don't think about the transaction because that's just, that's, that's a speck in time from a long-term relationship, especially if you plan to be here, you plan to be you know, if you want to build a good business, you got to be, you got to be a part of the community. You got to be local. You have to be, I imagine you're not here just to do this for the weekend, right? You want to be here forever, 20 years, 30 years. You want to, you want a long-term business and big businesses and long-term businesses are built on reputation. So when you think about, when I think about solving these issues, when I think about handling complaints, or if you got to do, do refunds, and that's what it came down to, like, man, I, we can't keep giving money away on these refunds. And it's like, Ooh, we just talking about a couple of dollars. So you think about, you think about the value. So I tell them this, you know, and I'm kind of jumping around, but I would say, let's think about the value of, of a guest. And I think you know, we, we kind of went through and did the math, but a regular customer is worth. And I mean, and I say regular, I mean that, you know, every other, every other week, your customer, someone orders from you twice a month, I would consider them to be a regular. Somebody orders from you every week, you should treat them like go. Um, but someone that orders from you, you know, twice a month, that customer is worth, was worth about $800. So if you're building a business and you got, you know, a thousand customers and half of them are regulars, we're talking about $400,000. So I would say every time you, every time you, Every time you, you, you try and approve this point, take $800, ball it up, throw it the hell away. And then it, then you think about it like, Ooh, I would never do that. I would never take $800 and just throw it away to prove a point. 
So what are we what are we really trying to do when we get into these these right or wrong? These I didn't I, I didn't make the mistake is your mistake. Why should I have to pay for it? Situations with with the customer. And one thing I always say is there's there's no there's no win and loss between us and the guest. There's just not like not not over a pizza. Now, if you you know, if I got to protect my team, you're threatening somebody you're doing. Yeah, I'll, I'll bust your ass over that. Like that's when we can get into the right or wrong. But we're just talking about the order. There's no right. or There's no there's no win and lose. There's no right or wrong. The only time we win is when they come back. So if, we, if I got a if I win, if I OK, say I did, it was your mistake and I prove you wrong and I don't give you your money back and you never come back to me. So I won I won that. That interaction, but I lost I lost the relationship. I lost a customer. But if I solve it for you and you come back and you appreciate that and you tell somebody like, come on, you can't even you can't even quantify the value of that. If I solve it for you, especially if I go above and beyond, because that's, you know, I'll get into that in a second. But, but if I solve it for you and you appreciate that, then you're going to come back. And that's, and that's where we win. And that's where the value is when, you know, our job is to keep the register ringing, right? You, you try to win that argument, you go, that's just money. That's just money. That's a guess. That's a relationship thrown away and possibly even more soured. So. If you're in that situation, you're an operator, I would caution you to just check the ego and don't don't try to be right. When I was when I was with Fuzzies, um, great company out of Fort Worth. When I was with Fuzzies, they would take, you know, they took put their own spin on on last, which is we all know what last is. Listen apologize, solve, and thank. So we're talking about handling customer complaints. Listen, apologize, solve, and thank. But they took it one step further and they and they put the B on last. So, and the B was believe. Believe them, believe the customer. Like it, and it made so much sense. Like every, every, every step of it becomes that much more impactful when you actually believe that they have a problem for you to solve. If you don't believe a customer, you're not going to, you're not going to give it your, you're not going to give it your full attention. You're not going to give it your full, you're, you're not going to put your heart into it. But if you start with belief and you say, man, maybe this, maybe this person, you know, wow, we did make a mistake. Let me, let me try to fix this. Let me, let me take care of this. You start with belief when you're listening. So, and, and I'll, we'll, we'll B L A S T blast. Believe, listen, apologize, solve, and thank them for the opportunity to solve the problem. That's how you recover somebody. So when you start with belief, everything else falls into place. Listen. Now, now leaders, I'm telling you, listening is a, a skill that is absolutely crucial as a leader. and something that you need to be passing on to people. Like you have to be able to listen, decipher, understand, so that you can then solve the solve the issue. So believe, listen attentively, apologize for the situation. And does it an apology is not an admission of guilt. Just because you you apologize for the situation, I'm sorry that that happened. And if we and if we screwed up, I'm sorry that we're that we screwed up. I'm sorry that we ruined dinner tonight. Like how can we how, how can we fix it? Apologize. And then solve that shit. Like, don't just don't say, oh man, I'm sorry, next time you will get it back. No, solve it. Fix it. How can I make this right? And it's not, I, I can't stand those cookie cutter approaches to solving problems for customers. Oh, no, sorry, we'll just give you give you a credit for the next one. We'll give you a credit. No, we get the next pizza's on us. Hey, come on, man. That's weak. Like. Listen to them and solve the problem. If you screwed up the birthday party, how are we going to fix that? We didn't get dinner, man. I'm sorry about that. Let me, how, do, how, how can I get your dinner back together? Man, you had to, you had to order from somewhere else. No, I apologize. 
how can I, how can I fix that for you? And it's, and it's about solving it to their standard. Like how do we fix it for them? Not for what works with our POS system, not for what, what fits inside our, our parameters. How do we solve it for them? And then we thank them for that opportunity because the scariest thing in the world to me is the person who has an issue and never says anything because you know what happens? That person don't come back. Thank them for giving, for, for, for bringing it to light that you had an issue. Thank them for having, for, for speaking up on that, on that complaint. Appreciate that because that customer is giving you a chance. They didn't have to do that. They can just say, you know what? West Shore didn't get it right. I can't, I can't do this. I ain't going back there. And that's the worst thing that can happen because then you, you don't, A, you don't even know that there's an issue in your operation and B, you lost a customer. And what, and what did we say a customer's were? A regular customer twice a month, $800 a year. All of, the, all of the money, throw it away. And that's, and that just can't happen. That's, that is so scary for me. So, and I tell, I tell my teams, you know, when I was, when I was running the stores, I would always tell folks and, and here, and let me actually, let me back up a little bit as a leader, you have to empower people and we'll, and we'll go to that, to that solve. You need to empower people to, you know, empower them to solve it. Like you stop putting all these layers in there. If somebody has got to complain and then they got to go get a manager and then the manager got to talk to the owner. And then they, like, come on, man, why are you, why are we giving people to run around about a pizza? Empower the, empower the cashier to solve that thing. Empower whoever interacts with that customer to solve it or give them a path to, to a solution. So like, and always, I used to tell the managers, um, and chat and Chad who worked for me for a long time. He'll, he'll tell you like, I'll try to fix it before it gets to you. Because if it gets to you, if it gets to me, I'm gonna solve the hell out of it. Like, if we messed up your pizza, I'm going to give you your money back. I'm going to give you the pizza. I'm going to replace the pizza. I'm going to give you another pizza for to, to give to your neighbor. I'm going to give you a gift card to the restaurant that you had to order from because we screwed up dinner. Like, well, I'm going above and beyond because I care about that, about that relationship. I care about you coming back. So, like, make it, make it so that they want to solve it before it gets to you. And you know what? And that, and that, that, he didn't like that because, it was, you know, what happened? Oh, that cost us. Oh man, my food cost gonna be a little bit higher. We just gave away three pizzas, four pizzas for one pizza that we screwed up. Oh, we just gave away. We just, you know, it's too much. And that's the point. It's got to be too much. If I, if you got a problem in my place, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it, fix it. I'm gonna bring it. I'm coming out there myself. Man, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm gonna bring it to you myself. If it reaches me, then we we got a problem. And I'm and I'm really I'm really attentive to the solution. So empower your people to solve those things, you know, and let them see you going above and beyond. Don't let them be afraid to, to take care of somebody because if it starts going through too many layers, things get lost. People get confused. Like, you know, communication gets dropped and it's just too much. You ever play that telephone game where you can whisper in somebody's ear. Then by the time it comes back around, the whole damn message changed. It's the same thing with a complaint. If you got to go through all these layers to solve things, don't do that. Like, come on, man, give these people the power to take care of this stuff. So empower your folks. Um, what else did I have? I mean, that's, oh, oh I, had, I, wrote a, I wrote a note that says it, indifference is a killer in the restaurant business. It's something my, my, my buddy Greg Salmon used to say. Uh, he would say one of the biggest killers in the restaurant game or in the customer service experience in general is that feeling of indifference, meaning people are bringing us their hard earned money for an experience at our place, a product, a, a night out, a, a family dinner, whatever it is, they're give, they work hard for those dollars and they trust us with taking care of whatever they, whatever experience they're coming to. We shouldn't treat them like it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, 
we were talking about customer service and indifference is a killer. Don't make people feel like you could you could do with or without their their business. That's that is the dumbest shit I ever heard. Like, why would you treat somebody like that? Like you're trying to build a business. Come on, man. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got. So blast, believe, listen, apologize, solve and thank. Stop, stop treating people like they don't matter. Empower your folks and go above and beyond with your solutions. Take care of folks. And that's my, that's my customer service spiel. And, uh, and I'm, and that's where we're going to leave it. We're going to wrap it up. Pizza King, Tyrell Reed. Remember like subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, we're really trying to build and grow this podcast. So I appreciate any feedback. Um, please leave those comments. Give us ratings. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Google podcasts. We're, uh, we're on YouTube. Obviously, we put these clips out on on Instagram and 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 TikTok. So, go follow me, Tyrell Reed Senior. Um, you know, just just show some love. Share this with somebody that you think may need to hear it. Anybody wants to link up with me, you can email me info at tyrellreed dot com. Again, we got the twenty one day next level leaders course for free on the website, and uh, we got free forty five minute strategy session if you're trying to you're trying to build your team. Uh, you need some tips. You need you need a strategy for for taking your restaurant operation to the next level. We always start with leadership. We always start with team building. Um, I do a free forty five minute strategy session. I, I I set aside a couple of days a week to talk to folks, a couple of hours for a couple of days, so I can realistically do like three or four a week. So jump on my calendar. You know, let let's chat. Let's talk. Again, appreciate you. Uh, this has been fun. Episode three. Can't wait to talk next week. Take care. Peace.